Hello. So we're out again. Just woken up. It's really bright. Considering it's like 4.40 and 4.45 in the morning, it is silly bright. This is Solway Firth. Over there is Scotland. Uh, and just up there is Bowness on Solway. There was my mini hotel on wheels for the evening. Who needs a camper van? You can keep your Volkswagen Caravanels, Vauxhall or Eva, is where it's at. Uh, not a place to bring your kids though. No one for a day out on the beach here. Right, so I'm gonna have a bit of breakfast and we'll crack on. Let's go. Hello, good morning. So, just been sitting enjoying the sunrise, which threw me a little bit because my geography is awful and I'm in the west, so I did not expect the sun to come up there. <laughs> I thought it would come up, I don't know, not there basically. I thought it was going to set there because we're in the west. So, people who know more than me, can you let me know why I'm in the west, looking out to the west, and the sun's coming up? I'm obviously not. <laughs> looking out to the west. Anyway, over there, somewhere, is Gretna. That bit of land over there, that's East Riggs. And over there, Anan. So, we're going to be walking down this road on the Hadrian's Wall Path. 140 kilometres from here to Wall's End which is like the official end of the Hadrian's Wall path. But I'm going to try and do coast to coast and get to Tynemouth. So I think it makes it about, I think it's 160, 165, something like that. And uh, hoping to try and do that in five days. So some good miles every day. Uh, I'm going to pick up a couple of stones from here, take them with me and uh, chuck them in the water at Tynemouth. Little update for all you geography lovers. I've just checked on my compass on my phone, and although this, I don't know why it didn't make any sense to me. Although we may be in the west of the country, I am still pointing due east. So I'm still looking east. So even though I'm in the west of the country, I'm looking east. Of course it makes sense. <laughs> the, the land isn't orientated to the same way of the magnetic point of the compass. Who knew? Hello, if you spot this when you're out and about, this is gorse flower. You can eat this, it's quite nice. It's got like a, a bitter apple peel sort of taste to it. It's good though. Look at this stuff here. If you're going bushcrafting tonight, I'd have grabbed a load of this. That would be great for starting a fire. I would just stick that in my bag. Take a big handful of that with me and use that for starting a fire, but no fire tonight, so don't need it. Neve, whoever you are, I got you. Good rainbow. Let's have a look on the back. Neve Smith, Carlisle. Good work. I picked it up. I wasn't going to. I walked past, but I thought, how cool would it be to go and pop this down on the other side of the country? So, Neve Smith, Carlisle, I'm going to take this to Tynemouth. Can you spot the old Roman road? Flipping neck. Beautiful blue sky. And it is toasty. It's only seven o'clock in the morning. And I am sweating. There's going to be a glow about me when I get to Drumber. I stop for my breakfast anyway. This is the view of Solway Firth from Drumber. Um, just been reading a little sign of information about it. There's a building over there. 
Drumburg Castle. And that's built using red sandstone from the wall. Now apparently, this is back in 1307, apparently at low tide, there's just enough of a, a sand spit across the firth to get across. And Scottish raiders would come across this spit and try and attack Drumbur. And that's why the castle was built as a sort of fortification. So they could see the raiders coming across the firth and prepare their armies. I wouldn't fancy trying to cross that on low tide. Apparently lots of Scottish raiders did die making the, the, the trek across. Crazy. Just realized this is the first bit of the wall really that I've seen. This raised mound is the line of the wall. And it obviously would have been stone built and a hell of a lot higher than that. Yeah, so technically, I'm sat on it, having my breakfast. Not bad. To where we've been, to where we're going, Carlisle. See you soon. Look at this fella here. Edward the first. Oh, we died here. And this is not your average pub beer garden. Look at that. Beautiful. Very hand in. Burby Sands recommended. Just stopped here in this beautiful field. I don't sit down and rest. Maybe a coffee. There's this gorgeous old tree. It's all hollowed out inside. And I just stopped for a little sit and I noticed these. Let me show you. You see them? King Alfred's cakes. And they are great fire lighting starters. So I'm going to nip them off with my knife and put them in my bag. Just walking along and seeing Ben and Lucy's snack stop, little honesty box. Let's see what we've got inside. Some good select ice lollies. I'm gonna have one of those, I think. Now you've said that. <laughs> well, I'll put 50p in so you can have an ice yeah. lolly if you want. What? Well, put 50p in. Oh, of course you have, yeah. Oh, this is Elizabeth, by the way. <laughs> Hiya. <yeah. laughs> My walking chum. <laughs> Oh, now then, we've got lemon or orange. There you are, and they're very, they're still frozen, so. Orange for me, I think. Right, orange. I'm gonna go. Hello. So shortly after my little siesta on a log in the farmer's field, I bumped into a lady called Elizabeth. Elizabeth, if you're watching this, if you ever see this, you're a legend. Elizabeth is in her 70s and is clearly a seasoned pro at walking. The pace, oh my God, I could barely keep up. I felt like I was having to st like step into some sort of military march to keep up with her. She was class, she got loads of stories, walked all over the world. Um, she was telling me about the Camino Trail in Spain. Um, walking in New Zealand, she just, she was a um, really good walking pal today. Uh, so just left her in Carlisle, she's going to stay there and um, she's got somewhere to stay this evening. So yeah, um, so I haven't done much filming today, just been chatting to her. Lovely, lovely lady. This is why I love walking, you know, meeting people like this, it's great.
Right then, history lovers, I'm actually walking on the remnants of the wall. This side behind me is called the Vallum. Apparently it was dug out by the Romans and they think potentially, um, not potentially, intentionally flooded and stocked with fish for the Roman army. But this that I'm walking on now, all the way, in fact, shoot behind me, all the way back there, this is the old wall. And this whole area is called Bleetarn. And up overhead is where I'm gonna to camp tonight. Thank God. Hello, good morning. Uh, not much filming last night because I was at a campsite, so I didn't want to be that guy going, oh, you are, just film my YouTube channel, you are. So just kind of relaxed last night and had a bit of tea, had an early night. Look at that beautiful sunrise, it was glorious this morning. Still pretty early, I think it's about half five, quarter to six. I'm going to try and put some miles in before the sun really kicks in. Um, I think the plan today is to find a big shady tree to hide under while the uh, the heat of the middle of the day passed me by really so uh, I'm gonna get to twice brood tonight so another 34 35k today but if I can put a shift like I did yesterday morning and get 25k done by lunch I'll be very happy so this I stayed at Bleetarn Farm campsite last night Highly recommended, really good facilities, uh, owned by a lovely couple. Uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out. And th like the perfect distance, you know, from Bowness, if you're doing this walk and you're gonna put a big day in the first day, then this is the perfect place to stay. Might be in trouble here. There's a big flock of sheep. If you all gang up on me, I'm done for. Hopefully, I'll just scarper. See how we get on, eh? Oh God, there's loads of them. <laughs> here we go. Be confident, Phil. Show the moves, boss. Hey, you lot. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just coming through. Don't mind me. That's it. See you later. There's more of you. Whole squad. This one's sleeping, not as noticed. Hasn't noticed them here. Neither of these two. Just stay asleep. Don't mind me. Hello.
sheep dream about. People jumping over hedges. This is a polite request to uh, Hadrian's Wall. If there might actually be some wall at some point, a bit of stonework maybe, something Roman and historic, that'd be great. Because I'm 40k in so far from Bowness, and I haven't really seen him much more than a ditch. So come on, Hadrian's Wall, up your game. Hello fans of uh, slightly inaccurate and not very informative Roman history. This is the Banks turret, the remains of it. It's just up from Hare Hill, which was the first bit of wall that I saw. And that is all I know. You've got to love the Hadrian's Wall honesty box. Thank you, Matthew. This is just what I needed. Hello Roman history fans, I'm learning a bit more as I'm going because I'm reading the signs, that helps. Behind me is Harrow's Scar, Mile Castle 49. These are one of the turrets, of the fortified entrances that were posted along the wall about every mile or so. And there'd have been between 10 and 30 soldiers stationed here, keeping watch at all times, uh, usually from a single building. That's yeah, pretty interesting. Right, well as far as plans go, that went pretty much as well as it possibly could. I thought to myself, I'll go, find somewhere, eat, hide away from the midday sun, get me energy back and then crack on to Twice Brood. And the Samson Inn at Gillsland did just the job. Really lovely beer, the food was great. Just chilled out there for a couple of hours. How I've only had two pints, I don't know. Well, self-control and the fact that it will wipe me out, so plenty of fluids. And yeah, I am fully recharged, ready to rock and roll. Did I just say ready to rock and roll? Jesus. About to start a big climb, and that second pint's coming back to haunt me a little bit. Ooh. Right, let's get to the top. Here we are, top of said big hill. Whew. I was down there. Let's Easing up. I know the light quality is bad, it's late and I'm losing the light quite quickly. Got the tent set up there, there's the tripod. I'm going to try and get some night photos using the new night mode on the iPhone 12. Uh, the distance there is windshield crags, which nearly killed me today. And there's the beer over there that's currently restoring me. So, yeah, I'm currently on top of a steel rig. Lights down there, that's the pub. 
spice brood. Right, let's see what kind of pictures we can get. Night y'all. Night y'all. Don't say night y'all. Good morning, welcome. Um, didn't do much filming yesterday. I was struggling big time. Um, I'm trying to conserve your battery as well. But to be honest, the last, I reckon, two hours yesterday, I was just, I was dead on my feet. Thank God for Howard. Howard, you are a legend. Howard's from Peterborough and I met him halfway up windshield crags and me and him sort of, co-supported each other proper teamwork made the dream work yesterday and got ourselves to the pub so thanks howard um i woke up early doors this morning so i camped out last night on the top of steel rig um and this morning got up at some ungodly hour uh, in order to do a time lapse of the sunrise um and it worked pretty well I i'm very pleased with that i tried doing a little bit of astrophotography last night um, I was just going to try and use the night mode on my phone, but to be honest, I fell asleep. <laughs> so um, I, I fell asleep with both doors and my tent open. I must have been absolutely exhausted. Uh, so yeah, that didn't work. But some lovely shots this morning. Just been to Sycamore Gap um, and took a nice picture there. And now I'm just heading off. I'm going to Walwick. Wal Walwick? Walwick? Wal Let's go Walwick. I'm heading there today. So uh, a lighter day, 20 kilometres. Um, so yeah, let's go. Let's take a look how beautiful this place. This whole area is stunning. This whole area I'm about to walk into is known as homesteads or housesteads. Water down there is Broomley Luff. And then that peak over there, Sewing Shields Crags. That's where I'm headed. somewhere here we are top of sewing shields crags the lump right in the middle over there steel rigs where I started off and I've walked up and down all those lumps and bumps and up to here. That is not a bad view, is it? Let's see if I can try one of the bird whistles that my granddad taught me. Bacock! No, didn't seem to work. Hmm, weird. Anyone's got any clue what you're supposed to do? 
supposed to do when there's 20 tons of beef blocking your path? I wish you could tell me, because I don't really know what I'm going to do now. Right, show me his boss. I'm just going to try the old get up trick, see how that works. Oh no, he sat down. Oh, that one stamped its feet. Right. Um, need another plan. Right. You may or may not see me again. <laughs> bye bye. See, now that I showed them who's boss, they all think I am the boss. They want to follow. Yeah, I told you, didn't it? Next time, move faster. <laughs> Morning. Don't look at the hair. No one knows what's happening with the hair. Woke up this morning at Green Carts campsite um, to this complete foggy whiteout. So uh, everything's a bit damp this morning. It's not cold though. So actually this could be a bit of a godsend because it's a lot cooler. So um, struggling yesterday. Legs were sore, knees were sore, felt drained. And then when I got to camp, which I knew was a a light day. It was only a 20k day yesterday. I thought I had two 20k days. I gave myself 120 and then 129k day. It was a 34k day on the last day. So it's not as short to say as I thought it was. But I'm just going to give it a go. See how far we can get. If it stays nice and cool like this, I'll be okay. Let's crack on. Is it a nice pose for the camera? Yeah, I was just looking at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> I know what that is. Jake the cow whisperer. Oh, he's chasing these horses. Has he, got, has he got the gift? Yeah, the, uh, he fed half an apple to each, and then while he was feeding half the apple to one, he started to the orange bag. Out bag. <laughs> grabbed an orange out, chewed it for about 10 seconds, and once it got through, he just spat it out, so it was too gross. Here we are, the pack of weary travellers. Jake leading the way. In the distance, the pub. Never has a pint been so necessary. So, just left the pub. Fully fueled. Two pints in. Good to go. Got about 9k, 10k to get to Wylam. And then have a my tea there, a couple more pints I think, and then go back a little bit to some woods, see if we can find ourselves a, uh, a wild camp spot. Let's go. Hello! Just said goodbye to Jake and Kieran, two lads from Nottingham that I bumped into yesterday and then it turned out we were at the same campsite last night. Got takeaway pizza and just started chatting and I've walked with them until now um, and they really have brought me along today having somebody to walk with and chat to and trying to keep up with Jake and his relentless pace has really not only helped me forget about my aches and pains and my feet and all that sort of stuff but it's um, yeah it's been good it's been good fun today so you probably will never watch this lads because well I'm just some random old bloke that you met on Hadrian's Wall. But if you ever do, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your walk. Found a little den, look. Couple of chairs inside, nice. No bar though, so can't stop. Penultimate night. 
I'm in Wylam, lovely little village. I've just been to the Stevenson's campsite and set my tent up. Um, I was going to try a wild camp and I'd earmarked a woodland on the way into Wylam to um, wild camping. And I got there and there were big signs up saying private woodland, no public access, shooting in operation, CCTV in operation. Now, I'm all for giving things a go, but I don't fancy getting shot. And to be honest, I found a really lovely spot as well. It's right by a little stream and it was a little clearing in a garlic sort of meadow, wild garlic meadow. It was lovely, but I couldn't risk it. So I'm in the campsite. I'm gonna go and have a steak for me tea and a black bull. And I'm gonna have a couple of pints and I'm gonna go and get some sleep. Really good day today. Covered some serious distance and felt good doing it. So yeah, love it. Good morning, the last day. So just walked out of Wylam. Um, had some nice tea last night. Had a beer with Howard the Legend and his pals. Um, just walked past George Stevenson's birthplace this morning. That was interesting. And now I'm in the woods along the banks of the River Tyne. So this stretch is pretty flat. <clears throat> No ups and downs to worry about today. So just follow the river all the way to Wall's End. And I'll stop and have a look round Sedjadunum. And then, seeing how my legs are, I'll, uh, I'll push on to Timemouth. Let's go see what we can see. Newcastle one mile, Timemouth 14. We are getting there. Here I am, said you're doing them. Got the whole place to myself, haven't I? <laughs> it's like my own personal um, experience. And they've, obviously they know who I am, obviously. So they've closed it all down to all the, the, the normos to let me in and have a look around. It's very impressive. It's huge. There are houses and all sorts built over this. Because everyone forgot it was here. This would have been where the office was. Behind me there, that's the, where the commander's house would have been. Over there is where the granaries were. And then right back over by the start is where the, the barracks were. 500 centurions would have been stationed here. It's a lot of people. <laughs> Right, enough of this, I need to get to Tynemouth. Right, I made an executive decision. I didn't walk to Tynemouth because the metro station was within spitting distance of Sedjadunum. And I'm done. I am totally done. So the concept of another, the prospect, sorry, of another two and a half hours hiking just on tarmac like I've just been doing from Wyland not for me Tar I think if it had been grassy and fields and lovely views and all that sort of stuff I would have because you can stop along the way and have a coffee and chill out but yeah not for me this time so metro into time mouth I'm gonna go down to the waterfront now and get my feet wet
Short Sands, Tynemouth. This place is beautiful. Right, so I'm getting my feet wet. Let's go and lay this stone for Neve. Let's get off home. What a trip. What a mental five days it's been. Boots wet. <laughs> 